Hello and welcome back to Fred in the Shed. We're up in the Radio Shack and on this video we have a very small 20 centimetre active loop antenna to test. Let's get straight into it. Let's see what you get in the box. So first off, there is some instructions. It's very easy to use. It's pretty simple. There is some English at the back. Now, this does claim to be an active tunable antenna. When I tried it with this little ATS20+, Plus, it was only a short test, I found that turning up the control knob, it, it to me it just felt like a gain control. But it does say it's tunable. Uh, we'll test that in a moment on one of these little uh, SDRs. We'll, we'll see when we tune that knob, does the gain go up and down or is it consistent? So yeah, anyway, instructions, that's fine. The loop itself, it's 20 centimetres across the diameter, so it's only a very small indoor antenna. Stainless steel, does feel quite nicely made, I will say. has a BNC connection here and I assume this, yeah, it does rotate. So that's very important, we'll explain that in a moment. Then we've got the unit itself, ABS plastic. It's quite light, um, does have a built-in, I think it's an 1850 lithium-ion battery. Two outputs, um, one on the back there, BNC, for the patch lead to your radio. I don't know what that is, I don't know if that's a reset button. USB-C charging for the built-in uh, battery. Then we've got the... Yeah, the BNC connection on top, that's uh, that's for the loop. And then there's the gain stroke tuning control. Bright LED comes on to let you know uh, we have power. Um, it's a little bit notchy, I will say. It does does feel about that, that way around it, a little bit tight. I suppose that will loosen up. We have two different connection patch leads. They seem quite nice quality. This looks like feels like RG174 to me. Yeah, RG174, that's absolutely fine for receiving. So on this one we have two female BNC connectors. Uh, they're about a metre long, I would say. And this one here, we have a BNC female to a 3.5 mono jack. That's quite good. That fits most shortwave radio receivers. So quite nice that they supply you with the two leads. Also supplied is a little BNC male to SMA male connector. That would be ideal just to plug into an SDR dongle. And then finally, we have a USB-C charging lead. And that's about it. Construction of the antenna, well, pretty easy, isn't it? It's just literally a BNC connector there that slides into the base socket. And then the whole thing rotates 360 degrees, which makes it a directional antenna. Obviously, this is an indoor antenna. It's quite small, just 20 centimetres across the loop. If you're fortunate enough to be able to string out a long wire outside, along your garden or whatever, this little antenna is never going to be able to compete with that as far as gain and also distant stations that you'll receive on an outside antenna. However, once you move to the indoor environment, if you were to stretch a long wire up indoors, what you'll find is that it will pick up loads and loads of QRM, loads of man-made interference our homes nowadays are plagued with electronic devices and that is a real problem for indoor shortwave listening with this device the idea being that it's rotate rotatable is you should be able to rotate it it's directional and you'll be able to home in on the signal you're trying to receive that should help the strength of the signal and then finally it does claim and we're going to test that in a moment it does claim to be tunable via this little pot here so that should boost your signal even more and hopefully reject those really annoying QRM interference signals. Tuning range of this loop antenna, mostly HF really, 2.3 to 30 megahertz and it will also tune on the medium wave broadcast band. First question that I need to answer for myself really, is this a tunable antenna? Is this pot here is this a tuning device or is it a simple gain control for a built-in amplifier? And we can test that by connecting it up to an SDR radio. So let's do that. Right, we're now connected to this SDR. We're on upper sideband, 14.2 uh, megs. 
Now this does claim to have a 20 decibel increase in the signal. So when I switch it on, I'm expecting this green line here, just sitting above the waterfall, I'm expecting that to jump up. And as I increase or turn this pot, if this is just a amplifier basically, that line will continue up the scale. But however, if it is a proper active loop, if it is tunable, we should see the signals move across the band. So let's try that out. And there you go. Yep, so straight away we've seen an increase in the signal strength. You can see that on the waterfall. Right, the moment of truth then, when I turn this, what's going to happen? No, that is tuning, look. As I turn it backwards and forwards, you can see the signals go across the spectrum scope. The gain is not increasing. It's very sensitive though. There are some signals that's coming in there. So yeah, that is tuning. That is an active, tunable antenna. Very, very sensitive. That's quite surprising. Um, I would be tempted to swap, I'd swap that little knob there, try and get a larger sort of VFO knob on it, but uh, that is tuning. Well, there you go, it says what it does on a tin, I guess. So I think what I need to do is take this downstairs, put it by a window where it's gonna do its best work, and then have a little flick around the uh, frequencies, connect this up to the camera, and let's see what it brings in. Yeah, QSL Chris. Well, no problems. I'm also using the ICOM 7610, but I'm remote controlling it uh, through the internet. And it's located at uh, my cabin in the mountains of southern Norway, where I also use uh, a linear amplifier. And um, the antenna here is a very uh, it's, it's a strange band uh, covering a wide to 10 meters. About 15 meters above the ground, stretched between two pine trees and my aluminium mast at the cabin. So that's the setup here, Chris. You're doing very, very well. Uh, five and nine, easy copy, no problem. Oscar Echo 3, Echo Charlie Romeo, this is LA2PIA. Yeah, QSL, Johan, no problem. Uh, thank you so much for the nice uh, signal report. You're loud and clear here also, even though there are some stations creeping up on the frequency, uh, you're still uh, readability 5, no problem whatsoever. The name here is Peter, like Papa Echo, Double Tango, Echo Romeo, Peter with a double T. And uh, the, the current station I'm operating is located in the mountains of southern Norway, roughly 200 kilometers away from my home QTH. So thank you for the call, Jochen. I won't keep it too long. Lots of stations waiting. Thank you again, and uh, give my best. Okay, call four, Papa Hotel, Bravo, five and nine. Thank you very much. This is Florida Five, Papa Yankee India, Fox from the air, activating two parts, Fox Trot 2754 and Fox Trot 2172, QRZ. Mike 7, Papa Kiro, Papa 5 and 9. Thank you very much, and 73, this is Florida 5, Papa Yankee India, Park from the air. Nikito Mike X-ray, you're perfect. Okay, Kilo Echo 8, Kilo Mike X-ray, thank you, you 5 and 9. Thank you very much, and 73, so I'm activating two parts, Fox Trot 2754 and Fox Trot 2172, 73. Thank you, Fox Trot, thank you, Fox Trot, thank you, Fox from the air, this is Florida 5, Papa, Yankee, India, thank you, Fox Trot. Sasa Doria, Fox Trot, Sasa Doria, Fox Trot, Sasa ama son anda savunma ayağını koyuyor ve topu oyunmanın dışına çıkartıyor. 15. saniye itibariyle Galatasaray karşılaşmadaki ilk köşe vuruşunu kullanma hazırlığı içinde Kerem Demirbay o noktaya gitti. Hemen yanına kadar sokulan isim Mert Ersan. Futbolcu Enis Soldu. Enis Soldu tekrar çizgi yapar. Helal koşan Mendy'e doğru. Mendy cese alanı sağ köşesine doğru sokuldu. Bir arafa sağ kanata doğru. Viz çağırdı. Bir arafa sağ kanata doğru. 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 Bir arafa sağ kanata doğ
ቆቴ ሙላ ተቆብራት ጀልዴሲ ባየ ማት ገለማ ጀልዴ ተቆጥቦ ኮሎ አዲ አርካቢት ባየ ረክዚ ጀልዴሲ ኩን ካለራ ደንከኒ ደሞን የዱን ገምታ ደኒ ጀልዴ ተራ ነው ፍራይ ገን ጀልዴ ተራ ጋባ ኦብራይ ገኒ ጀልዴሱን ከና ምናን ካ ኛቱ ጀልዴሲ አከል ጎዲ ጀልዴሱ ኩን ፈለ ተቆመላዲ አቄቱ ጎ ጋኔን ጫ አንተ ታቶ ባቄቱ ጀለኒ ነንተ ሙለ ሞኒተራት ዋንቲ ዱን ዱን ጋርጋ ማናት ጋር ይገጣማ ካነቦዴ ነንቲ ቡን እ ድቦቆሎኛ ጡት ከ ቦቆሎ ዘብራራ ዩኑ ነ ነኒ ነንቲ አንሶዳ ደ ነንቲ ደንዴ ኤቦላ ነሪ ዋንቲ ክሽም ኤንዞሉ ኮሽላርዳ አይጋድ ዩዞፍ ክሻተር ነው ዘን አይጋድ ዩዞፍ ፓሳይትንዴ አረጅኑ ሶው ካባላርዳ ኦቶካዛታ ኮላይክ ክሽ ዞሉ ክሽ ኮሽላርዳ አረጅኑ ዘን ዩፍቴክ ፐርፎርማንስ አልመኑዛ ያርድም ጆ ክሽ ዘን አረማር ከይስ Nokta hatasız bir araba varmış. Masralını değil, uzmanını dinleyin. Aracınızı kimden alırsanız alın. Uzman gözünden detaylı ekspertiz için. Arabam.com Auto Ekspertiz Liverpool right now for £11.99 no contract just search now sports earlier on though what a dramatic game it was at Bramall Lane it ended 2-2 between Sheffield United and West Ham and if you want to have your say there's only one number to dial 03717 Sunday session on Talk Sport with now stream the Africa Cup of Nations live on Sky Sports contract free with a now day on my diaries Tickets are available from AXS.com or from Videorama on 0208-907-0116. Exclusive radio partners, of course, Leica Radio. Now listen, would you like to hear your favorite Sonnenigam song playing sometime next week? Well, listen, you have to work uh, for us here at Leica Radio, okay? Uh, I mean, of course, all of the presenters are, are working over here, but the listeners have got to do their, uh, do their share too. All you need to do is drop me a voice note to our studio WhatsApp. So basically, click on that little microphone button. Back up in the shack and conclusion time. Well, I have to say that that loop's performance on upper side band on 20 meters, it absolutely blew me away. I was not expecting that. That was a big surprise. That ham radio station that was coming in from uh, Norway, which is a, it's about 300 miles away, as clear as a bell. And even the second station was bringing in a little bit of noise and it made me work for it, but I was able to adjust the loop and was able to bring him in. Although we'll come back to adjusting the loop in a moment because that's not quite as easy as it first appeared. So yeah, the sideband performance, um, amazing from a little loop indoors to bring in those stations. When it comes down to shortwave and the broadcast band, it did okay. It certainly brought in the stronger stations, uh, no problem. When it came down to the weaker sta stations, I think because shortwave is such a, lo a larger bandwidth compared to, say, sideband, which is very, very narrow, it didn't manage to tune out the noise quite so effectively. And sometimes the noise was going over the weaker stations. So broadcast band on shortwave, I would say it's okay. I don't think it's brilliant. It's certainly not bad but not as good as sideband. And then finally, medium wave. Well, I've only got really, I think, four medium wave stations now that I can pick up around my QTH. And yeah, I think it did quite well on, on medium wave. It took, it took out all of the noise. It was uh, dead easy just to tune the antenna. And uh, yeah, so medium wave performance, I thought was very good. When it comes to tuning the antenna, yeah, this is a little bit strange. I wasn't expecting this. So obviously, first thing you need to do is you need to tune the direction because this is a directional antenna. It's a bit like a beam. So you, you tune it like this to get the strongest signal and then you can match it. You can fine tune with the adjustment pot now. Problem I found, and I'll see if I can go a bit on camera to sort of show you, is that every time that you bring your hand close to the antenna, it changes on the tuning. Everything seems to jump up, I don't know, 10 or 15 uh, kilohertz up up the scale and it's a i don't know if that's the same on all loop antennas because i've never had one that i've used indoors before so what you have to do is you have to just turn it a little bit take your hand away let everything settle down and then turn it again and uh, yeah that's a little bit odd as i say it does make it slightly tiresome it does make you work for it once you've got the direction right when it comes down to the tuning 
I didn't find that so much of a problem. It is still a little bit sensitive when you bring your hand towards the uh, control box. Now when it came down to the tuning, um, when I first got this, this little tuning um, capacitor here, it, um, it was a little bit stiff past the halfway point and uh, it still is to be honest, it seems to be loosening up. But I have noticed when I've tuned it, it does go to a particular point and then everything seems to blow out on the screen. Um, just about there. It doesn't seem to receive anything. I don't know if that's just the nature of the antenna or it might be a little bit quality control. The fact that it um, goes a little bit stiff there slightly worried me a little bit. But to be honest with you, most of the tuning is done on the first 45-50 degrees of its range so it wasn't a problem but uh, yeah it just feels a little bit stiff and a little bit notchy there it doesn't feel the best tuning capacitor my final thoughts do you know i think i'm sticking with what i said at the beginning of the video if it's possible that you can put a long wire outside maybe up your garden then i think that will definitely outperform this antenna it's not harry potter's wand it's not magic however if you are stuck with an indoor antenna and if you are getting a lot of man-made noise which is ruining the hobby then yeah this is a viable option that little tuning capacitor there it can certainly reduce almost get rid of all of the noise especially on sideband this small loop antenna was sent to me by Banggood for review so thank you to them if you're interested and you want to check it out further i will leave a Banggood link in the description just one word of caution though this uh, ga450 i've seen this on amazon uk for sale for a ridiculous price something like 90 uk pounds so it's not worth anything like that thankfully banggood are selling it a lot cheaper than that also banggood i believe um, are having a big sale in march so if you want to hang on to them and go back and check you might be able to get it cheaper still also, I know people are going to ask me, this little software, Defined Radio, um, very, very cheap. I think these are about £65 now. And I did criticise this radio when I reviewed it because it lacks a touchscreen. And I still think it needs a touchscreen. But I've been using this quite a lot and it's been rock steady. If you're interested in this um, little radio, I'll leave a link in the description where there's the full review on this little SDR. It's, it's quite remarkable for about £65. Um, I don't even know how they produce it for that. But anyway, let's bring this one to a close then. So there's the thumbs up from Fred in the Shed. I hope this video has been helpful, been useful to you. If it has, just drop me a thumbs up down below before you go. That helps me, helps the channel. And as always, I'd like to say thanks for dropping by. Please, please, please stay safe, look after each other, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Oh.